Okay, this demo, I'm going to show you how to add on the Umbrella Roaming Security Module to your AnyConnect VPN module here. So earlier in the demo, I recorded the uh, VPN install, so it's ready to go here, just from a VPN perspective. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the ASA side, what we need to configure on the ASA side. So first of all, there's the AnyConnect uh, client software that you have to upload to your ASA, and this specific version, uh, Windows 1 4.8 uh, version 2.0.4.5, it's about 69 megs. Okay, so it's got the, all the modules within the ASA uh, any kind of client. But we're not going to push everything down. We only want to push the modules that we want. Um, so what we got to do is, first of all, uh, configure an any connect uh, client profile for the Umbrella Roaming Security module. And before I even do that, I would go to my Umbrella portal. Okay, log into your portal, go into deployment, roaming security, or uh, roaming computers, roaming client, and download this uh, module here. This is the uh, org info.json file that contains your organization ID and the groups and things that uh, the credentials that the client will need to connect to your specific umbrella portal. So you need to download this. Uh, it's a very small file, just a text file. I downloaded this earlier already. Okay, and if you need more documentation, you can just get it right here. This is a very good documentation. All right, let me get back to the ASA side. Let's go ahead and build our uh, profile. So let me go with Add, and this is going to be Azure, and I'll call this Umbrella Roaming Security. That's just a name here. Okay, and then now I'm going to make this profile usage to be uh, Umbrella Roaming Security Module, as you can see here. And then my uh, XML file, this is the org info file that I downloaded from the Umbrella portal. So I'm going to upload it from my PC, browse my local file. So it's in my Umbrella local folder. That's the file. Hit select and hit upload. Now this gets uploaded to the ASA. Hit OK. Associated with the disk zero. OK. And there it is. And then I'm also going to assign this to group policy of Azure. And that, uh, that's the tunnel group I, I will be connecting to. So hit OK. Hit apply. And here are the CLI commands if you're interested on how to configure it. OK. So now that uh, XML profile has been created, let's go back into our connection profiles and go look at my Azure tunnel group or connection profile. And I'm doing SAML authentication against Azure Active Directory. Okay, and then uh, from a group policy, this is where I'm associating or uh, enabling the module. So I go to my Azure group policy, inside edit, and this is SSL client only, and go into the uh, advanced, any kind of client, and uh, I'm going to uncheck Inherit for the optional module here. And just go ahead and select the Umbrella Roaming Security. There it is. And if I need more modules, I just check it here. So only checked item here will be deployed down to the client. So not the whole thing gets uh, pushed down to the, the end user here. Okay, so I'm just pushing down the Umbrella module. It's only about 4 meg in size, so it's not very big. And down here is the client profile that I configured earlier, so we're good. Let's go ahead and hit OK, hit OK, hit Apply, and send and save. OK, my ASA has been configured and ready to deploy the umbrella module. Let's go back to my client. Here it is, and let's go ahead and connect. Now it's going to uh, take me through the Microsoft portal because that is my authentication process that I configure. So it's going to be Bob at uh, Irvine Security on Microsoft. And then my password. Okay, and then uh, now it's going to take whoop, bad password. Now it's going to take me through the duo multi-factor authentication process that I configured as part of my Azure uh, authentication process. So I'm going to hit 
send me a push then I got a pop-up on my phone that I'm going to hit accept or approve okay then I am signed in to any connect you can see here welcome to the Azure AD group I am good Hit accept and now it's checking for a product update and you can see the umbrella roaming security module 4.8 is being pushed down okay and now it's doing the installer here we'll let it finish okay perfect now that module that small module got pushed so let's see what happened here let me go ahead and open up my uh, directory and let's go into C drive and I go into program data if your program data is not showing you have to unhide this in uh, control panel to show all the hidden folders then you go into C uh, Cisco and then go into secure mobility client go into the umbrella portal uh, directory and you see the org info file there that's the file that got pushed down from the ASA now let's take a look at the umbrella side here you can see here that the uh, roaming security is still inactive because uh, this org info file has to make an API call to the umbrella portal your account and enable a few things to make the final connection okay now what I need to do is I'm gonna disconnect from uh, the uh, any connect because I don't need it anymore because um, really uh, roaming security is supposed to protect me when I'm off VPN I'm off net okay so now this is just data and org info here and th there'll be a, a few minutes for this to actually build out you'll see additional uh, directory here but in the meantime we can take a look at services oh there it is SWG actually got created um, you can see when I go into services, you can see that uh, SW. Uh, I'll make this a little bigger. The Cisco AnyConnect SWG agent is running. Umbrella Roaming Security is running. These processes are running now. Okay. Uh, prior to the SWG folder being created, um, this would uh, not be running. Okay, so now it automatically s started because the client reached out to the umbrella portal and, and um, completed its connection and SWG uh, client got uh, enabled. Perfect. Now you can see here umbrella is active. And if we click on this, we can see that uh, click on roaming security and there it is web security, uh, web protection status is protected, HTTP and HTTPS requests or zero is very little so let's go ahead and launch uh, a couple of websites let's see if I simply go to apple.com that's most likely HTTPS okay and I'll see the number went up from 9 to 28 for HTTPS requests now let's do uh, a few other ones HTTP here we go. This is an HTTP versus HTTPS site. And I'm making an HTTP call for a few things. Okay, so let's take a look at the client side. There we go. Now my HTTP request went from 0 to 8. And of course, if I go to HTTPS, um, that number or increment, and then let me go back to HTTP. But you get the point here that the, the stats will increase as more traffic flows okay all right so let's uh, this is appears to be working on the client so it's we're all good here now the real main control is on the umbrella side the portal side right we need to go into policies and you'll have the web policies uh, that needs to be created and by default there's a default web policy to either match all identities and uh, either allow all whatever policy you want to have it configure in my setup I have a SWG no fun policy one um, policy that I created and one of the uh, factor here is the identity piece how do I uh, associate my client which is uh, my client here is PC is uh, let's check the name here it's Windows 10 VM dash test that's the name of my client and that's what gets sent up to the portal here so I go to edit identity and I go into roaming computers 
and then here is my Windows 10 VM that uh, it picked up and I just associate it uh, to this group and that's it okay and then the rest of the policies are content filtering uh, so I have a, a policy to block you know certain categories like gambling I'm blocking Facebook I'm blocking a specific destination URL list uh, that's a custom web page and oh HTTPS inspection um, I also did this ahead of time that uh, you have to download the root cert of the umbrella portal to the client or they will get the untrusted um, website pop-up so click on this uh, and download and, and pre uh, deploy this to the client so they won't get that pop-up so they will trust the certificate from the umbrella portal uh, future releases will allow you our customers to upload their own certificate but as of today for now it's the umbrella certificate only but that'll change very soon okay and if you want to look at some uh, uh, information about the client we can go to reporting activity search and you can simply look for roaming computers as an example in terms of identity type because there's a lot of data probably flows and hit apply and let's look for information on um, Win 10 test VM so there it is that's my Win 10 test VM and if I simply go to a couple of other websites as an example if I go to www.facebook.com I have a block page that's by configuration this is my own little my little pony uh, logo that I uploaded okay and, uh, and if I want to report incorrect block I can the user can click on this and they can fill in their name information and send a message to the administrator so if we go back to the umbrella portal and let's do a uh, refresh and refresh we can look at the block traffic and you can see here there it is there's block traffic for um, Facebook all the Facebook uh, traffic gets blocked and if you want to drill deeper uh, you can look at full details of the URLs and the long strings and things that the client went to okay so this gives you a, an overview thank you for watching